much fun. Okay, we are live. I'm so excited. Okay, you guys. Um, it's been a while since I've done a peek into pink. So here's what I want you to know. If you're a guest on here, I want you to jump right in. But I want to, like, I can't, I'm, like, holding on to my seat. I'm so excited. I have, like, you know how, like, Beyonce needs one name? There's, like, B, Randy Gleason. She has two names, but, like, she only needs one because she is, Super famous in my world, in the Mary Kay world. And like we all call her our Shiro because she is a hero, a Shiro. So I can't wait to get started and share a little bit about her. But I want you to make sure I got to make sure I stay on task. So let me stay on task. You guys are on. I see you guys coming on. So we're going to do some giveaways. So I want you guys to comment for some giveaways. And we want to know who invited you today. Because we know that your consultant is so excited that you're on, but I want you to know you should be excited that you were invited. Because in our Mary Kay family, in our world, like we love to invite women that we admire. We don't we want people in our world that bring us energy, that give us joy, not that drain us, but bring mm -hmm. us up. And Randy has just given me so much energy just in the five minutes we were on before you guys even got to see her. And the life that Randy lives the, the famous, the excitement, and also none of that at the same time, right, Randy? It's like, it's not as glamorous as it seems. You, she said, you should see behind this um, brick wall she's got, right? There's some fun things happening behind there, some dinner, some things like that. So yay, we're getting some comments. So I want you guys to know we're going to get it started, though, because I'm going to honor your time and honor her time. And I'm going to introduce Randy, but I... In our Mary Kay world, we like to introduce people in a way that is very formal and super elegant. And I wish I could do that, but I would rather you guys hear from this amazing woman for as long as you possibly can. But I do want to say one thing. So um, for the non-Mary Kay world, you probably do always ask this to your consultant and anyone you know in Mary Kay. Do you drive a pink car? And Randy can tell you the answer to that is yes. She does drive a pink car, and she also drives a really big truck right now, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, Randy, how many pink cars have you earned in your career? I don't know. Like like above 10? I've earned nine career cars, but okay. I, I don't know how. I don't know. It's, it's okay. I just was curious because I, I love it. How many of us in the real world are like, I lost count of how many free cars I've earned. It just happens. So to give you guys a perspective, nine free cars means 18 years of free driving because they get a new one every two years. So mm -hmm. they, we, I don't know why I said they, like I'm not one of us. I am one of us too. Um, but I want to get into this because what I, what I want you guys to hear from my heart is that um, if you want to be a part of a company, you want to be a part of a company that means something, that does something more. And to be honest with you, I've been in Mary Kay for eight years, so I've been watching Randy for a very long time from the back of the, the auditorium. So to be able to be side by side with her on a screen is like a big dog deal for me even. So I just want you guys to know that soak this in because this is a moment in time that you guys are just going to be get to see her real life. And, and I know she's shaking her head because she doesn't think she's anything special. She just knows she's a normal woman but she has inspired thousands of people and just has really lived her life out loud, which is what I honor and love about her and how authentic she is. Even watching her, she was texting some of her guests for a party she has after this, and it even sounds like Randy when she texts. She's like, I'll be looking for y'all. Welcome. You know, that's how I love that about you, Randy. It's just how real you are. And you are getting some love in these comments. Because so I know they are so excited to hear you and you so i usually make this real casual and i told randy that that i am real casual about this um i just really think that people want to see into our real lives and what is this whole that's why i say peek into pink like take a little peek into what your life mm -hmm. looks like so maybe you could start off with where are you right now i'm in alabama okay. and that's not where i'm from i live on the border of louisiana and texas and we are in gadsden which is like an hour east of Birmingham or so. And we've been here since Saturday and we will be here through this Saturday. And so you are spending a week and you are staying in your very beautiful, luxurious RV. <laughs> I know I've seen all the things. It's like the nicest. I love it. I'm like, it's such a nice RV. Like you're living mm -hmm. your life in there. And I went from like never camping to glamping. 
Like, I, like, like, I was like tent and small thing. I was like, no, I don't, I, that's, no. And didn't you say you like took out the dining room table to have a Mary Kay office? You're like, yeah, I'm in my office right now. So I made um, the dining room area. I basically take, took the table out and built a little office area in here. And um, behind me is like the kitchen and all that. And I do this, I have this little vinyl brick wall. And so if you see it moving, please don't think like a wall is moving, it's vinyl. But it just helps when we have a busy night and we're, you know, like we literally have a really fast turnaround tonight. He's got to eat and get in bed. We've got a 4 a.m. morning. So I couldn't have the like house spotless for the camera in the background. So you just, I have Velcro up this little wall. So I'll give you a little sneak peek of the real life. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? I'm really excited about that. So there is dinner. Okay. Yeah, pork chops, rice, and gravy, because we're from the South. So if you're like paleo or healthy, just don't judge. <laughs> uh, black eyed peas and cornbread back there. Damn. And we're still waiting on him to come in. So he's still working and then he'll be, he's outside. So he'll be here in just a minute. So he could come in and fix his plate and I could just keep on rolling. I love that. And so one of the things that people don't know about you is what your husband does is you travel mm -hmm. with your husband because tell us a little bit about what, what Daryl does. Yeah. So um, my husband, when we graduated college, we both entered the workforce. So we both did exactly what we were supposed to do. Uh, we went to college, we graduated with honors, went and got our career jobs and, um, he was a teacher for eight years and I only was in my uh, public relations marketing for a hospital for a year. And I realized that here I was, we we're newlyweds. We we're reading all these books about like, you know, smart couples investing and living a debt free life and how to get ahead when you're a young couple. But Robin, we did everything we were supposed to do and we were living paycheck to paycheck or po check to po check. That certificate did not get us a big salary. In addition to that, we felt like, you know, I literally had, you know, a week of vacation, a week of sick leave a year when you're starting out and you're on the bottom of the totem pole. And it just was, it just felt like, it just felt like we didn't have freedom and we didn't have the chance to get ahead. And I knew that that was not the country I lived in. I knew that, you know, my, my dad was self-employed. My grandma, I grew up watching her. She owned a little general store in a tea tiny town. And I got to watch her work in her store and I got to do paperwork with her at night. And we started working in the store at probably age eight. I don't guess there were child labor laws. I don't know. But um, I just learned that there are other ways. And so um, that's when I really began increasing my Mary Kay business on the side. And um, within one year, I was able to leave my job and, you know, we earned our first couple cars and I matched my corporate income. And I, I did it one to have um, some flexibility. I have some health challenges and, you know, I didn't have enough leave time to even go to my doctor's appointments, much less when I was hospitalized. Mm. And so it just was a lot of stress for not a lot of reward. And I don't know about you, but I'm OK with having a few stressors if there's a big reward. Like I can figure out the stressors if there's a big reward or there's you know, like short term game, uh, short term sacrifice for a long term game. Yeah. So we played the long game for about six months and I was building my business while I had my corporate job because we knew the end game. Right. We can do something for a small amount of time when we know the end game. And I knew the end game was to do Mary Kay full time. So he was a teacher and he we live by Toledo Bend Lake. It's a great fishery. And he had this dream of becoming a fishing guide. This is where you take people fishing because they can't go fishing all the time. When they want to go fishing, they want to have a great memory and actually catch fish. So they hire a guide. So he had a dream of being a fishing guide. And I thought, I don't even know what that is. Like people pay you to take them fishing. And um, he set up a little goal poster because he watched me and Mary Kay, like literally set goals. And um, he got his master's. So he was still doing what everyone said he should do in the career track. But while he was getting his master's, he started his guide business. And um, so he grew his guide business. He never went back to his job after he got his master's because his guide business has, had exceeded it. Then he began doing competitive tournaments and now he's a professional fisherman. And we're doing this year is the first year that I've been able to travel with him full time because we just didn't think it was possible. We just didn't know. And so um, this year with COVID, we just decided we wanted to be together and we didn't we didn't, you know, I couldn't have someone else come into my home and do my treatments for my medical condition. He's my COVID, you know, buddy. So we're, you know, our quarantine buddy, I mean. So we had to be together. So that's why we're on the road and I have my little home on wheels. <laughs> I love that. And, you know, Randy, something that you said that just like I'm going to treasure forever is like you felt all these stresses without any of the rewards. Like every day mm -hmm. was stressful and the mm -hmm. reward was one day you'll retire kind of like that's almost what I heard in my head was like, 
And I can't believe, I mean, I do believe it, but like as a young couple, you guys were ready. You were already think, thinking bigger and thinking more. Mm -hmm. So wait, can you walk me through for a second? Like you were thinking bigger, you were thinking more, but really, did you really think Mary Kay could give you that bigger or that more? Well, let me tell you why I first started Mary Kay. I was a college student and I was 18 years old and I was looking for some extra income on a flexible schedule. And I didn't really want to work an hourly wage. I grew up in my grandmother's store work earning $4 and 50 cents an hour. So if that tells you how old I am, that's the minimum wage back then. And you, and then any food you ate in the store, she took it out of your paycheck, even as her granddaughter. I learned business from my mama. Okay. I love that. Like I ate my salary in beef jerky every week. Okay. So, um, but I learned that I did not want an hourly wage. Like I didn't want to, I wanted an opportunity where I could work when I could and be compensated better. And so in college, all my friends were working 20 hours a week, student jobs and things like that, where I could service three or four customers orders and make the same amount of money and could do it in an hour. And so, I, that's when I originally started my business. And it was just like this great, fun little side hustle. I only had about 12 to 20 customers that I serviced, a few from college and a few family members and a few um, uh, people back home. And that was it. That's all I did. But what, what I did get was exposed. Mm -hmm. And every single month, I got an applause magazine in the mail. And this is a magazine the company sends every consultant. And in the applause magazine, it publishes people's earnings. And I'm going to tell you, someone who was not plugged in, I never attended a meeting. There wasn't Facebook. There wasn't any of this. Like email was new. OK, <laughs> so, um, I, but every month I got to see all these amazing women earning executive incomes. And so here I was starting this big girl job. And y'all, do you know what I got for Christmas for my corporate job? I was so excited. Like I, we're going to get a Christmas bonus. This is going to be amazing. We rip open the envelope. It was a $25 Walmart gift card. I couldn't even buy a turkey with it. And so in all these people in Mary Kay are earning like pink Cadillacs and diamonds and trips. And I'm like, something is wrong with this picture. Something is wrong. And so that is why it just really influenced me to see that so many women could do it. What I realized is in that magazine, if I could earn a third of a third of a third of a third of what those women were earning in that magazine, it would replace my income. And so that just really, it, when I can see people like me doing it, because when I first started, Robin, my biggest doubt when I first started, it would almost held me back, was I don't look like my recruiter. I don't act like my recruiter. Okay. So I thought in order to be successful, Mary Kay, you had to be like her. I'm so grateful I did it anyway, because mm. I don't have to be like her. I can be like me. And so I wasn't a girly girl. I didn't wear makeup. Mascara and lip gloss were the only things I wore back then, if I wore anything. In fact, like I have to remind myself still today, like, hey, put your makeup on, girl, right? And I grew up on a cattle farm. I was a tomboy. Like, so I, that was the thing I battled, but I'm so grateful because what happened was everybody, I could reach people that she couldn't reach, right? Mm -hmm. like we all have different circles. And I think that every circle needs a Mary Kay consultant. I do because it's who your people can identify with and connect with. Did that, that even answer your question? Where did you, what did you even ask? That was, that answered my question and then some, but I, um, I really, I, I really love what you said. Every circle needs a Mary Kay consultant mm -hmm. because I would tell you that like I grew up in a Mary Kay circle, but I was outside the circle. Like I watched my friends get picked up and dropped off in a pink Cadillac. I knew their moms did Mary Kay. My mom even did Mary Kay. But what what made me decide was seeing someone like me successful. Mm -hmm. And so I love that you said that because I've always told people, they're like, Robin, like before Mary Kay, everyone who I said when I joined Mary Kay, they're like, we would never buy skincare and makeup from you. Like maybe we'd let you teach us how to play sports, but never in a million years let you teach us anything that has to do with appearance. Like I was the girl that nothing. And so I love that you said the skill, like the skill of like, you're not, you're not brilliant at makeup and skincare until you get taught and you have, you've gotten a degree. We, I feel like a lot of us have high school bachelors, masters, you know, PhD. Mm -hmm. There's women in Mary Kay that have MBAs that have gotten all the letters behind their name. Mm -hmm. And they still choose a Mary Kay career because yeah. it is a skill. And I think what you hit on that really I think people need to hear is the long game. Yeah. And I really don't think it's a very long game in Mary Kay. What I think is the long game is waiting and being young and starting this business. I was mm -hmm. young as well and I was in corporate America. 
And I just had um, my first offspring sales director. She just became a director in a year and a half. And I had this epiphany, like in a year and a half from start to finish. And really it took her less time than that. It took her brain more time to figure out if she really wanted to do this. She promoted herself to the top 2% of mm -hmm. our company. Yeah. So when you think about that from a corporate perspective, were you thinking to myself, like, I'm never going to get to the top unless I'm old or I like mm -hmm. somebody dies or retires. So like oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. So when I was hired, I was hired as the director of marketing. There was no one above me. And you yeah, it, it would, I mean, it was like I'm going to literally like how. And the thing, too, that really attracted me to build my business through Mary Kay was number one, like I wanted to know the marketing plan. And because we're there, you know, back then I was looking from the outside, like they're a debt free company and they're so strong. They're not a fad like they they know what they're doing, obviously, with 56 years of excellence. OK, so I want to invest my time and talent in a proven mm -hmm. company in a proven marketing plan that has sustained recessions like that was super important to make some safety and security. But the second thing that was so attractive to me was it was in black and white on paper how to promote yourself. Because at my corporate job, I didn't know how to get a raise. I could not outperform myself. I was trying. I was working late. I was working more hours. I was doing extra projects. I was doing thing way, things way beyond the call of duty. And I, I didn't know one was getting raises, you know. And so I didn't know what to do to really get an increase that I was looking for because we literally had a financial plan at that age. We were 21 and we had we knew what we wanted. We had a financial plan, but I was not going to achieve it in that job. And in Mary Kay, that advanced brochure tells you, you do this, this, and you get this. You do this, this, and you get this. And that was so attractive to me. There was no games. You know what I mean? There's yeah. no games. It's like dating. It's all real, no games. Keep it real. Keep it. I love that you said that too, because, you know, one of the things that I think separates Mary Kay from other companies is what you said. We've sustained recessions. Like, this is on our first time we've been through this, right? Mm -hmm. This is not the first time Mary Kay's seen something that's and survived mm -hmm. that. I actually never even thought of that, Randy, until you said that. Like, I want to be a part of a company that I know through the bad times and the good times, they're going to not just do great, but they're going to rise above. Yeah. And so in your experience of all this years of Mary Kay, what would you say is like the one thing, the fiber that brings people in common that is some kind of success in Mary Kay? So I would consider you successful in Mary Kay. You've you've really, I don't think you'd be living this dream life that you live right now, traveling in an RV with your husband. And by the way, they also have their dream home on a lake. The RV is like a second home pretty much that is a dream rv i feel like their rv is my nicer than probably my old kitchen but i love it like i love that inspires so many of us so is there one thing that you've ever noticed about women in mary Kay, maybe that you admire mm -hmm. um, that have a commonality yeah I, I think it's twofold i think that when you see women who are successful um in this company the greatest thing that you're going to find among them is that they have a vision for their life to be different mm -hmm. and they have the willingness to grow to get there because some people think that the person that you're meeting today is the person who began my business i'm not the same person as i was five years ago and it's this willingness and this it takes so much flipping courage it takes so much courage to grow and actually believe in your dreams you know you can have a dream but you, when you believe in your dream and you have the courage to step out in faith and go forward that to me is the recipe for success. You don't have to have any skill. You don't have to know how to put. Robin taught me this summer how to do on a tutorial how to do my brows. I still was doing the night the nineteen ninety nine you know etch up right. You don't have to have any skills because you can learn that. But you have to have a vision for your life to be different and the courage and willingness to grow to get there. Whether it's growing your skill, growing your self esteem, growing your self confidence. And, and I was always scared of the word of self-confidence. I was always, I never wanted that to be like, you know, those girls growing up that were like really stuck up. And I think there's a difference between stuck up and a healthy self-confidence. And so I, I didn't know really the difference. And I was too scared to have self-confidence because I was afraid it would come off that way. But there is nothing more attractive than a woman who knows her God-given gifts and works in them to bless other people and to serve others. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's the beauty of this, that, I mean, there are things that I totally stink at, like stink bad. But when I work in my gifts, I have mm -hmm. joy and I can serve others so abundantly. And I think that's really the process of people that are successful is they, 
They're not too worried. They don't dwell on the things they're not good at because God didn't want you to. God wants us to live in our gifts and the things that he gave us all uniquely to be different. So that's to me that the common thread that I see the most. I think that's so brilliant because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought that. But as I grow and I see I'm like, everyone's done it so different. Everyone looks so different. Like, you know, there are moms at home with three or four kids doing this business. I mean, look at Gina. She's got like five kids doing this business. Randy's yeah. traveling the life with her husband and Rowdy, her dog. They were just hiking by a waterfall today and she's cleaning up and getting her face. She's getting tanned being outside. And like, it doesn't look the same. No one, no one's life looks the same. And that's so intriguing to most people is they mm -hmm. have something in common, but we don't have everything in common. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beautiful the way you said that. And one thing I want to hit on, you mentioned that you had, um, no skill in like makeup and skincare that could have mm -hmm. back. You have some health issues that are pretty severe as far as most people are concerned. The things that have held you back that you thought would have held you back, how do you think those things now have, you've chosen to catapult that and mm -hmm. create something where most people would say, Randy, it's okay. You can sit yeah. down and just relax. You don't need to do all this. Yeah. Right? Don't you think most people would say that to you? I think that sometimes when we have hard things happen in our life, we can choose we can choose how we want to justify it to ourselves. And, um, you know, we, we knew early on, and I don't, I don't, I hope this is okay to share this, but we knew early on that, you know, with cystic fibrosis, when we got married, the life expectancy was 27. <laughs> and so we knew, we didn't know how much time we had, but we knew the life that we wanted to have. And we knew that, you know, when, when I left this world, I w didn't want to be a, a debt or leave a debt. I wanted to leave a, a blessing. Right. And I think sometimes when, if someone were to tell you like, mm, you probably have 10 years left, you might live your life a little bit differently. And so cystic fibrosis, while it is a gray cloud, I believe the silver lining is you really look at what's important and you realize you have one life. And procrastination is not a choice because procrastination a lot of times is a form of perfectionism where you think that you need to wait till something's perfect or something's different in your life or when the kids are born or when the kids are graduated or when this is that or when and that's y'all i don't want to come across rude but i think it's pretty um i don't want to say this word because this isn't a good arrogant that's a better word i i find it to be arrogant to think that there will be time in the future mm. that god gives us all this day and with this day, we use the gifts he's gave us to really live out the vision, the calling of our life. And to know that the vision he gave us is not the vision he gave the person next to us. Mm -hmm. So we can't let their opinion sway because God didn't give them their vision. He gave us. And um, that's another thing I think in this company, it really allowed a place for me to dream because I felt like in my corporate job, everybody went in the break room. They're broke. They're tired. They're exhausted. They want to go home. And when I entered the world of Mary Kay and just the surrounding of women who who dream and give you permission to dream because they dream and the permission to set goals for your family because they do that, it absolutely changed. It, it changed everything. I finally felt free that I can truly live out my dreams. And if I when I achieve a goal, I have people to celebrate. And when I don't achieve a goal, I have a community of girlfriends say, guess what? You can still do it. Keep going, you know. But um, yeah, so I. Again, I have no idea what you originally asked me. You oh, how, oh, how do you? Okay, this no. is the thing. So I cling, um, I really cling to James, uh, the book of James. And this is what I know to be true, is when we face obstacles in our life, that verse says, consider it pure joy, which is the dumbest stuff you want to hear when you face an obstacle. Like that is not what you want to read. But guess what? When we face obstacles, it builds our endurance. Mm. And what it teaches me is how bad I want something. Because when I face an obstacle and feel crushed, guess what? That means I really want it bad. And mm. I think obstacles are there to help us to think creatively. I mean, look at COVID. Look at the number of people who have had massive growth in their businesses. Because when you see an obstacle, you just have to think differently and think creatively and think, well, how can I do this now? Not I can't do this now, but how can I do this now under these circumstances? And the adaptability of this business. I mean, I earned my first free car in a 21 day hospital stay. So it, it's the adaptability of this business to whatever your life is. 
there are women all around you washing their face and putting on cosmetics. And so it's really just that choice to say, okay, well, how can I do this with my situation? I mean, most people would think that I could not run a business. You know, we've been in an RV now for six months. Uh, we go home for a week or two, we tag home, but it's, it's adaptable. And I love that. Randy, I just want you to know that like, if I wasn't in Mary Kay, I'd be thanking my guest, whoever, my consultant who let me come on today, because I do think that you have a story of grit and I do love your boldness. I know that you're hesitant to sometimes say things, but I love that about you, that you are bold and you live out loud and you do not apologize. And at the same time, you guys, this woman has been nominated over and over again and won our Miss Go Give, which means she gave more to everybody else. And in Mary Kay, that's the biggest honor, is she gives of her time, her talent, and treasure because that's who she is. She gains nothing out of being on this call with all of us. I just want you to know that. She is just has a heart of gold. And if you, I mean, I don't really feel like I need to say anything other than how in the world would you not want to be a part of a community of women like this? Women like Randy, who are overcomers, who don't even really, really think they're overcoming anything. She just knows she's living the vision God's given her. And that's all. She doesn't apologize for it. And she lives it out loud. And I just believe in a time like now, we ask ourselves a lot of things like what, what Randy said, when COVID's over, when things get better. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, for all of us, we don't experience that. But if COVID has taught us anything, we should not take for granted anything because we never know what's going to happen. Um, and Randy, you've just lived that your your whole life. And mm -hmm. I love that you shared that. Thank you for being authentic and raw. And I would love for you guys to share, just share something that you guys really got from this. Because I can tell you, I, I'm so glad this is recorded because I have a million things mm -hmm. I want to like soak in and rehear and re just bless myself with all your words. Um, but for those of you that are guests on here today, I want you to ask yourselves, like, what if? What if, what if I could? What if I could mm -hmm. see an obstacle and overcome it? What if my Mary Kay, what if Mary Kay allowed me to just have some extra income? Maybe I'm not traveling all across the United mm -hmm. States with my powerhouse fisherman, world class husband. Ooh. Maybe I just, I just I'm in the background. I got you, Daryl. I see, I got you. <laughs> and maybe you just you want something more, like what Randy said, you that courage that you have something inside of you, but the courage to change, the willingness to do the work. Like that is what I believe we're looking for now. And if this company doesn't show you right here in just the exemplary example that Randy Gleason is to represent, I pray that you can represent all of Mary Kay because this is what Mary Kay looks like. Mary Kay looks like Randy Gleason. She is exactly the kind of woman that we all aspire to be like. I know I see all these top directors over here saying this. Um, there are so many so funny. You for the... They're all, they're all saying they don't want this to end. You are our hero. We love you. Thank you so much. You well, I will add this one thing. I do want to add this okay. one thing because um, I know we talked a lot about, you know, personal growth and just the blessing of the sisterhood and the, ex you know, just being exposed to all of that. But I want to talk to you, just leave you with a thought that's pretty, pretty hard and fast because I'm so passionate about it. You know, I remember, and it's still today, the stigma with women and finances and women and money. And we are changing that, friends. Gone are the days when there should be a stigma with women and money that's negative. And so when I began, um, when I, when I, when we really got married and we began building to sales director, it was so important to me, mainly because I didn't know how much time I had to make sure that I was leaving my family with a generational blessing, which means being debt free, you know, having a savings account. And because of Mary Kay, I was exposed to phenomenal and smart women who really taught you great money management skills. And so some people come into Mary Kay and they haven't had been exposed to teachings like that. So they come to Mary Kay maybe with you know, excessive debt or whatever this, and that's not abnormal in today's world. If you look at the statistics of, you know, women and their lack of preparedness for retirement, the likelihood of them to live in poverty once they're over the age of 65, it's like two to one to men. When um, most women think they need about $250,000 in retirement, and it's more like 700,000 right now. And so if, if you're watching this, and you don't have a plan B or you don't have a supplemental stream of income that's really loading you up for the future. I just think it's a really wise thing for you to look more into this because 
it is time for us to teach our friends, our sisters, our daughters, our granddaughters, that you can be a woman and you can be a great wife. You can be a great mama and you can also be a boss when it comes to your finances, having savings accounts, being debt free, paying off your homes early. And our Mary Kay business really has gave us the ability to do that. We paid off our first home at age 30. We were on a mission to do that. And I used my um, you know, my consultant income to do that. And so I don't say that to brag or impress you, but to impress upon you that we have one life. And I think one of the greatest things that we can do um, to you know honor God with, with our finances is to be free with them and to be debt free. And so I don't know where that finds you today. If you're young and you don't have debt yet, maybe that may influence or if you're in a situation where you weren't exposed to thinking like that and, you know, teach, we didn't learn this in high school. We didn't learn this in college. Why? I don't know. But it wasn't until I sat in a, a conference at a Mary Kay seminar that I learned this. And it was like, oh, Lordy, oh, Lordy, let's go. I was so excited. But um, so I just want to say that if, if you don't have a plan B or a supplemental stream of income, this is definitely something to consider because, you know, it's amazing. I love that. And thank you, Randy. I think you're so right. We just, I just heard some of those statistics about women in retirement. And I thought to myself, you know, mm -hmm. that isn't something that some of us need to think about. That's something all of us have mm -hmm. to think about. Mm -hmm. And so I really thank you for that. Cause the money part is sometimes the part that people are like, Ooh, let's not talk about that. Mm -hmm. But in Mary Kay, that's the thing we talk about and mm -hmm. how to make that making money is not a bad thing. It's a mm -hmm. great thing. It gives us choices. It gives our family. I love mm -hmm. that you said that generational that breaking that generational gap and really giving mm -hmm. a blessing to your family rather mm -hmm. than leaving them with debt. And yeah. I really believe that's going to change generations to come. So you guys, here's the last thing I want to leave you with. I would love for you guys to text your consultant right now. I want you to thank her. First of all, I want you to thank her so much for inviting you to have the best 30 minutes of your life tonight. I don't care if you never join Mary Kay, you just, your whole life was changed by Randy Gleason. I know mine was. So if you have a thought in your head that you're like, you know what? Why not? Right now it's thirty dollars to start a Mary Kay business. Thirty you don't you go to the dollar store. Like yes, I'm like I have things around here that were like I bought too many blue blockers that I'm pretty sure were thirty dollars. Like, yes, we're like, what can we do with thirty dollars? It's like, oh yeah, okay, these things. What are these things costing? Right? And that's what you could do to start a business. So if you're thinking, you know what, absolutely. I'm going to give this a try. I'm so inspired. I really believe that I can be that generational change for my family. I'm an A. Send your consultant. Tell her, yes, girl, thank you. I'm an A. I'm doing this. If you're like a little bit more timid and you're like, you know what? I need a, I need a little bit of time. Buy me some time. I have some questions. I want to know how this pertains to my life. I'm, my life looks a little different. What could this look like for me? I want you to text your consultant. Still thank you so much and text her with a B. Buy me some time. Maybe buy me some coffee. We can have a Zoom chat over coffee. I want to learn a little bit more about what this looks like. Maybe even the financial, how I can make my money, all that good stuff. And then C is, you know what? I love this. I feel great. that I feel so happy that I'm exposed. Right now, I think I just want to stay a customer, but I want to host a party for you because you're awesome. And I want to help you as my consultant. So I want you to text A, B, or C to your consultant right now. And I, number one, want you to thank her because I don't know about you, but we don't get a lot of these people that are willing to pour into our lives every day. And Randy, I am so grateful. I know that your time is limited. I know you guys have a long couple of days ahead of you. And tell Daryl, I'm cheering for number one. We're going to be watching you. Yes. If we can watch, can we watch this one live? Can we watch uh, this one? Uh, live is on Saturday. Yeah. Live is Saturday. Okay. Well, there we go. We'll be cheering you on. The Mary Kay world has got your back. We'll be praying for you. And Randy, I just want to thank you one more time. Um, I can't tell you how honored I feel to be sitting next to you, even if it's on the screen. The honor is mine. Robin, you are such a rock star and we all respect you so much. And um, you're just such a joy and a blessing to our Mary Kay world. And there is no way on the planet I would not be here with you when you ask because we just love you so much. Thank you so much. And I know you got a party to get to. You got to get some, share some more Mary Kay products with people. But have a great night. And thank you so bye. much. Bye, you guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>